The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeeze the please soft host. Once more into the breach, dear friends, as we look at, at this uh, market. Let's see if I'm at the right market. Let's see if I'm on the wrong page here. Maybe I am. Oh, there it is over there. I don't know, I've got so much stuff up on my screen, it's hard to know where to go for it. Anyway, as we start the show off, Take a quick look at the indexes. We're off six point. Is that a minus? I think maybe there's a bug on my screen. It says a minus here in front of the S&Ps. This can't be right. This will not stand. We're off six points on the S&P cash with a volume, 2.2 billion shares. And uh, what else is out there? Off 37 points on the NASDAQ. As they always say on TV, after 20 years, can we quit with the tech heavy nasdaq which they seem to add to every time they mention the nasdaq and the dow jones industrial complex off 91 92 points as we start the show <laughs> uh, i love the wisecracks in the den anyway uh we're off six points uh and we've got some fairly decent volume out here apple of course down we'll have a broad discussion of Apple out here. I think a lot of people are very confused about the fundamental aspects of how um, Apple makes its money and how stocks you know, or anything, commodities, uh, can become a cult favorite and a cult following. And uh, my experience watching probably the biggest cult stock of all time, I Omega, I don't know if there was a bigger one than that, and uh, maybe how that applies to something that Tom O'Brien said during his show earlier today with the lack of mention of Apple being down before the uh, markets opened. But uh, we will have plenty of time out here to discuss all these things and more. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On uh, and in this day of 1946, the Bretton Woods Agreement is signed in Mount Washington, New Hampshire, pegging a major foreign currency to the U.S. dollar, fixing the gold price at $35 per ounce, and laying the groundwork for the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank and the New World Order, where a robot, uh, robot, robot, robot overlords and uh, Skynet will rule us all with a benevolent hand. This day... In 1946, fixing the gold price at $35 an ounce. That doesn't sound very uh, capitalistic or democratic, does it? Doesn't to me. Anyway, and the nice World Bank, uh, just a bunch of squeezable fuzzballs over there. And uh, you just want to hug them like a bear because they're out looking out for you. Yeah, what else? Anyway, uh, I guess if you, uh, this Bretton Woods, uh, you got to be a sketchy character. I don't. I've never heard of him before, but uh, uh, just uh, just being around something like this gives me the hives. Yesterday in my newsletter, I said Apple is after is after the bell, and it looks like it's priced for perfection. Anything less than a monster blowout looks to be sold. It's probably not about the numbers tonight, but what happens after Wall Street chills stock it up last, last night. But at the same time, these shills will get to selling tomorrow. It's hard to dismiss the summer of failures in Apple Pay, Apple Watch, and Apple Music. The curse of the CFO and a tech company becoming a CEO looks ready to come true again. And in, I got a bunch of notes out here. Didn't have enough time to put them into slides. But there's a few things going on that I think people are sadly confused about. One is there an Achilles heel for Apple? And the answer is yes. And there's some other things that they don't want to talk about. There's no stock that's too 
low to sell or too high to buy. They can always go higher, and of course, they can always go broke. But the question is, if everybody owns Apple, aren't you just part of a cult? you got to have somebody else coming in the other side of that market. And that is the problem. Wall Street is 100% invested in Apple. There's nobody out there that runs a big hedge fund that can't have a piece of Apple because if it goes up, they're going to get barbecued. In the old days, in the 80s and 90s, uh, the old saying was for either buying a PC or a stock, uh, you will never get fired buying IBM. Uh, the current cult favorite, uh, is a little different than some of the other companies that we saw in cults before. Like I said, iOmega. iOmega is basically was a lunatic fringe. And a very narrow market segment where these people thought that data storage was going to be the answer to everything. It was good, but it was it's a broad business. It's not something that you can throw a net over and uh, own 100%. Uh, but there's a lot of things that you probably should be thinking about in Apple if you believe that it can only go up. And maybe this is a good way of connecting the dots backwards, as Steve Jobs used to say. May not be applicable in Apple today, but uh, may let you figure something out in the future. And as he said, connect the dots backwards. You never can connect them forwards because you don't know what you don't know. But what you know you can apply to patterns in the past. Apple made much less than Wall Street expected. They were off, depending on who you want to talk to about their numbers uh, and the whisper number, were off about 3 million uh, iPhones. Uh, iPad sales were rather disappointing. iWatch sales um, were so low that Apple didn't announce them. iPhone sales were up, but uh, they're dependent on a Chinese market flooding in to buy them with a government actively encouraging their people not to buy them. And uh, we've chronicled on this show how many uh, companies have gone to die like the elephant graveyard. That was like, must have been a 60s thing because I watched all those old movies. Elephants always had to go to one little spot to die. I always thought that was made up. Some kind of urban, urban tale. <laughs> not urban, so not even suburban. What would it be? Uh, a bush tail, that would be a tropical bush tail that elephants all go to the same place to die. But uh, it was, uh, it's kind of interesting because they say Chinese sales are up 100%. Well, again, they didn't give any numbers. So if I sold one iPhone this year and two next year, yeah, I'm up 100%, but does it really truly matter? Did it move the needle? It didn't move the needle. And of course, a lot of people were going, yeah, you sold 10,000 iPhones in China last year. Now you sold 20,000. Uh, that didn't do anything. And I think quietly in the background, uh, there is an elephant in the room, not the one in the graveyard. Uh, but the question is, does Apple have a Achilles heel? And the answer is yes. They make margins that few tech companies in consumer electronics have ever, ever made. Intel has been one of the few by dominating its business, making sure that they move faster, not control the market, move faster than anybody else. They didn't have to convince everybody that their product was the only one to have. Everybody just knew it. Uh, this is much more, Apple's much more the prom queen and king uh, in that uh, they want to be the popular kids on the block. And the little story that you don't hear in the background is um, that. Now, I know pretty much talking ill of Apple is might as well, you know, I might as well have a Tea Party button on going to an IRS audit. But it is one of these things where you have to be incredibly scared when everybody's long. And their one Achilles heel would be, and I think I know who would do it would be that someone breaks from the orthodoxy and decides not to give a massive, super massive um, uh, subsidies for buying their phones. My guess is that would be T-Mobile. Uh, if anybody's listened to the show for a while also, you know my theory on T-Mobile. They're going to continue to be such a pain in the butt 
that's what two T's, uh, that someone was is going to eventually buy them out because he's making problems uh, or life so hard for them. They know that they can't. Uh, T-Mobile can't last forever without getting additional spectrum, and they've got. They'll never be able to get it. There just isn't enough. So at this point, it is burning everybody's house down until they come and put yours out. And uh, I suspect that he will continue to do that. But if there is a company that's going to break with iPhone business, I think it's going to be T-Mobile. The question is, does anybody follow? And it may not be today, may not be tomorrow, but one day a big company will break with the orthodoxy and the prices of Apple iPhones will go up and their sales will go down. Also, we've seen probably eight quarters from Samsung in their discussion about how uh, and, and the consumers are changing. Um, one of the things that Apple didn't bring up again is once again, their market share shrank again this quarter. I think it's 83% uh, uh, Android and 17, uh, 16% Apple and 1% everybody else. They continue to see a declining part of the margins. Another thing that was wickedly uh, ironic was that they said only 25% of the people had upgraded to the iPhone 6 so far. Um, but if you would have listened to them over the last six months, everybody had to upgrade to it. There wasn't anybody. I didn't know that three quarters of the people hadn't upgraded. Um, you can tell stories one of two ways. And, of course, since it is a cult stock, and I was talking about uh, Tom O'Brien earlier in the morning uh, watching CNBC and saying, uh, it's been an hour and they haven't mentioned Apple down here off nine bucks. Why would that be? Well, <clears throat> they learned their lesson a long time ago with iOmega. Anytime they would say maybe the stock's a little overpriced, uh, they got huge amounts of hate mail and uh, people saying that they uh, should not be allowed on cable and rioters. Uh, again, you would probably be better off uh, at a NAACP rally with a uh, rebel flag than saying I Omega was going down. And today, now Apple. So what do you have? You certainly have a market that thinks that Apple has no Achilles heel. Achilles heel. Every tech company has one. Apple's is it is a right now one product company that they use statistics fast and loose and the problem is what happens the day they their subsidy model cracks they sell iPhones to companies for 700 bucks that then resells them for 250 bucks and tries to make the money back over time and uh, that model it just scares the bejesus out of me. And that's why Apple doesn't have a bigger multiple, by the way. No one ever says that. That is, they depend on somebody else, and those people can break at any time. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal
crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're back. And you had a question to look at uh, copper. And I've got it, a bunch of machines here, but uh, one is my trading machine that I have orders on and make sure that it's always perfect and running. And uh, this machine I have for a lot of other stuff, including the show, but I don't have my features account or anything on this machine. And uh, there is a rhyme and a reason. One, I've got a secondary uh, uh, account for internet in case this one goes down. It's not fast enough to do the show on or anything, but it's certainly uh, my backup in case something really goes wrong. But uh, eh, what else? Anyway, I uh, just wanted to pop this up real quickly. I've been putting it in the den today. Uh, these are the stocks that are uh, dependent on Apple in the supply chain. CRUS is off 5%. Skyworks Solution SWKS is off, uh, what, 4.6%. Uh, INVN is off 43 uh, Apple's off 45 as we speak here. Uh, Avago AVGO is off 4%. NXPI, the... Uh, the uh, chip that, of course, was going to change everything because everybody was going to suddenly start using near-field communication. Uh, it's off 2.6%. Broadcom off 2.4%. Uh, TXN off 2%. The AM uh, SC is off uh, a little less than 2%. Qualcomm uh, announcing more financial engineering was able to uh, cut the blood loss to 1%. RFMMD, which makes uh, RF tuning, uh, components uh, off 2%, and Triquent, uh, who makes a couple of chips in the uh, 6S, I, I think, 
I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, they're off 2.7%. Uh, and again, it's all about what's happening. Uh, they were 3 million short in how many iPhones they said that they were going to uh, sell. And of course, uh, Apple is notorious for sandbagging. And so this is a loop that just not an Apple has worked before. But anal analysts keep seeing uh, people like Apple sandbag. And they keep moving their estimates up and their estimates up and their estimates up until the sandbaggers can't keep up with them because they've been sandbagging forever. And instead of being just a little bit wrong one time, they're hugely wrong like yesterday. But uh, those are the stocks. If you were going to play Apple uh, to the short side, I would much rather watch maybe one of these stocks uh, and play one of these stocks than actually go after Apple itself. Again, it is depending, it wouldn't matter what the sales are. There's going to be uh, cult and cult members out here, and, uh, and that's all you can say about that. Uh, not such in uh, the commodities space of the chips that go in it. Um, had a request for SCCO. Da -da -da -da. And we'll take a quick look at this in my technical perspective. Um, SCCO. In copper, uh, I mean, if you were going to buy it, this would be where you were going to buy it. Uh, it's hard for me to figure out how uh, how you really figure that this is what you want to be in any of these metals right now. Uh, so let's take a look at it here. So it's off what uh, the big contracts off what four fifty five. Um, I mean, you're back to the sign of strength, so you're back where at least some level would be. Um, I've got a lot of stuff to get to here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on copper. I mean, at least on this chart, it doesn't look all that bad. The volume is okay. But, uh, again, just far too much energy on the way down to say that this would be a V bottom. Much more likely that this is some form of U bottom out here. This last little one here where I'm showing uh, the big up energy off that July 7th low up to the July 13th high back down to the uh, low on Ju uh, July 22nd suggests that why we probably won't blow out the lows in the next couple of days. You certainly would not expect a V kind of rally out of here. And this thing's more than likely is going sideways if it doesn't break down first. So I would not be buying this until you see a whole bunch of days with about 500,000 shares. Maybe that is a signal out there that this thing uh, is not going to get blown out. But uh, 1.3 million shares, so we're half the volume of the previous low. I just can't get excited about buying any metals no, no matter what at the moment. Uh, other things going on out here. We had Boeing come out with earnings. We'll get to them after the break. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else to say about that. To see all these stocks, gold, crude, hanging out at the lows and then breaking lows yet again. Deflation. 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 Be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n-a-d-e-x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio, consider the Principal Protected Market Safe CD from Everbank. They've just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your deposited principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Intrigued yet? The August 17th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, well, I wanted to go to Boeing real quick. They had earnings out this morning, and then we'll look at some of the earnings after the bell tonight. It's uh, in this trading range out here. It's hard for me to get uh, too excited, either bullish or bearish on Boeing. Um, as long as crude prices are down, it's hard for me to get bearish. This would be something you'd want to think about. Uh, it had more volume. It broke the previous high, 148.30 already today, but pulled right back into the trading range and uh, looks like this thing's range bound from 138 to 149, at least at the moment. Energy was about the same up as it's been down. I just don't see a great deal out here that says being long or short Boeing. One of the things that I've said before is I do not like being short monopolies. Uh, and one of the reasons why I would probably never be short Boeing, no matter how bad th they look. Um, they're up against Airbus. Um, Airbus is basically held together uh, by uh, a lot of uh, issues that have to do with government and not price performance. I know some people love Airbus in the den, uh, but uh, as I say, it's Boeing or I'm not going. But uh, not a whole lot out here. Just, uh, uh, you know, to me, as long as fuel prices are cheap, it's hard to get excited about seeing Boeing go down. Also, as uh, ticket prices come down and they add and uh, airlines add supply over the next 
couple of years. At worst, this is going to pull back a little. I, I know there are some companies out here that literally won't exist in a couple of years. To me, those are much better bets on shorts, and I'm going to make a lot more money on them than probably on uh, this one. Uh, that was for Todd on Boeing who emailed me. Uh, t -t 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 what else do I have out here? Uh, like a lot of these stocks, you know, markets pull back, it's coming back. I just think that there are a lot of stocks that have a lot farther to fall when that happens. ISRG, um, this is one of these stocks that ISRG is just, uh, what a pinball out here. This one has broken its previous high with volume. And of course, guess what? It can't, it can't hold that uh, above that previous high of April 21st at 559.04 with uh, 470,000 shares. Uh, it peaked above it. It turtled. It prey dogged. It stuck its head out with uh, a lot of volume. And uh, what's the uh, 555? So we're what, four bucks underneath what that was doing now. And uh, you got some nice got gaps. In fact, it double gapped over a gap. Um, it's very hard to see this company as anything more than one is perpetually hugely short. And uh, if you're short this thing, you get a little money to the downside. If you're wrong on the earnings, this thing pops higher. Uh, but mostly it's because of the enormous sh short positions always on this. Baker Hughes uh, was halted today uh, here on news. Uh, I guess some news that they're going to do a deal with Halliburton. And uh, this thing was all over the is all over the map. I don't know if that tick is correct. 53 is the low I'm showing. I know that the New York Stock Exchange did have a bunch of bad ticks this morning, and I am unsure which ones of these are right and wrong. You want to double check, probably with another um, chart vendor that doesn't use the same data as you tonight after the bell, and verify the ticks you get. Some of these may be scrubbed and some of these may not. Uh, Beave Aerospace, B-E-A-V, uh, not a happy day for this one. And uh, you've got your second huge gap down in this one, probably going to get a third. This is down on 7 million shares already today. And again, so many of these stocks, uh, I was talking to Andy uh, with instant messages, so many of these things are just hanging out this, at these lows. There's not a lot of volume, and all of a sudden, uh, the trap door falls out on them. Beeves, one of this. It, uh, the volume didn't look all this bad in the last week or so. Uh, it had been sideways. You could make a case that it was either accumulation or distribution. Um, when these things go sideways without a lot of volume, um, you thought the volume might have started to pick up into earnings. It did not. Um, looked like a, as much as they could sideways days out here are normally you know some seller just above uh, whatever the price is and anytime these things move a quarter higher a nickel higher they're out there selling these but you had your high volume low of fifty three dollars thirty cents in be uh, aerospace and uh, this thing as they said jump the creek as uh, mr. Wyckoff would say uh, with vigor uh, that opens up the next low out here, really, at uh, $36.51, which takes you back to the August 6, 2012 lows. And that would be it. Uh, okay. Uh, what else did I have at? B, Aerospace, China. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it for the moment. We'll go back to, if I can find my charts, there they are. I'm going to move all my stuff around yet again and size them. Been playing too many games here. Okay, um, stocks on the upside here. Uh, do, 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 do. VMware, nice little bounce out of this thing today. Uh, of course, it's way off its highs. And volume's okay, but not really out here. But again, so many of these stocks... Uh, the analysts and uh, the street is way off on. And if you're not completely horrible and everybody's piled in short on you, 
you get reactions like this, at least for a couple of days. Numbers weren't all that exciting, uh, but they were okay. Reported uh, 93 cents a share, including non-recurring items of two cents a share. Capital IQ, 4.4%, raised uh, EPS guidance. Um, this is a company that should do well over time. Of course, they're way off their highs out here. This thing's going to need to consolidate for a long time. Um, this is one of these stocks the energy did come on a cough, on, come off a bit on to the pre lows of April 2nd and March 16th, and it bounced off here. But my guess is you're still going to get one more chance to get this thing at 80 bucks and probably lower. Uh, it may just take a little bit of time. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, in the biotech space, Illumina finally could not live up to the hype that everybody had been putting on it. Uh, these are manufacturers of DNA sequencing equipment uh, and a huge, huge company. It is one of my fish that got away. I was looking at this thing at 80 bucks a year and a half ago and just couldn't pull the trigger. Never got a good technical uh, sign to buy it on it, although fundamentally it was beautiful. Um, and I probably talked about it for eight weeks in the Tech Insider. It will be one of my fish that got away, but not a lot of warning out here that this thing was going to snap and miss uh, this big. But this is when you get to super high frothy markets because you've got a ton of people short stocks, got a ton of people willing to run the shorts uh, like Google last week if you're on the wrong side of these. And you get these monster moves without a lot of, of warning. Of course, this one's going right back into... Um, its trading range, which is uh, the January 28th high of uh, 213.33. It's going to be hanging probably just above that right now. But uh, my guess is this thing's going to drift back in and start trading between that 213 high and the 178 lows that this thing saw a ton of times. And that is the good support is going to be right around that 175, 178 area for a while. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. what else do we have out here? Uh, doo -doo. LLTC. Uh, LLTC. Uh, another gap down linear technology corp missed its Q4 uh, consensus EPS by two cents, missed on revenues guided Q1 lower. And I don't think you can say anything other than the chip sector that. Uh, these are all going to look rather horrible. This one's headed back down to the $38 level where it saw two previous lows. Uh, that is back on October 16th of 2014, on October 10th of 2014, uh, where it made a low. Did test the bottom, kind of split. It's going to head right back down to that. So look for $38 before this thing washes out in LLTC. Don't think that there's anything else. Uh, Tepper. Oh, boy. Eh, it doesn't look like the party's going on, ladies. That Tupperware party is a thing of the past. It's blown out its lows with a volume out here today. And again, not a bad-looking chart. It had a sign of strength. It was sitting on top of that. Not a bad-looking technical indicator. Volume was low. It popped up with 3.3 million shares on the 28th of January. It's come back into that a few times with 350,000, 450,000. And this is the pattern in what I talk about when you say, or when I say crashes happen at lows. And there's just too far, too many of these stocks that are out here that would normally be a good uh, uh, Richard Wyckoff buy pattern, which is wait for it to come back, see the light volume. Uh, but these things are just jumping the creek at an enormous level when you don't talk about the stocks, the five stocks that are always talking about the cult stocks that are always being talked about on CNBC. Uh, FTI is another one out here, sucking wind. And uh, we'll go to our expert on that, Mr. Ross Perot. There will be a giant sucking sound. Well, another one that blew through the low is FMC Technologies. FTI is the symbol on this one. Huge volume as it breaks through its 5 million Share low of January 29, $34.85. It's already got 9 million shares out here. And uh, they were out with $0.52 cents per share, 
nine cents worse than the consensus and uh, not uh, saying things are going to change anytime soon. Let's look at a little longer version of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't know what you can say. Boy, this I'm going to have to even go back further on this one to see what it is. Okay, it's blown through the lows of August 9th, 2011. Eh. Okay, man, you're going to go back. Whew. The next big lows back out here look like they're somewhere eh, 23 bucks. 23 bucks on June 8th, 2010 is the next low in FMC. So uh, these people are in a world of hurt. What else do we have going on here? Did I get to the rest of the stuff on my list? Uh, see, again, a lot of people probably bailing out of Apple last night to figure that uh, they could catch a lot of people sleeping short in CMG. In fact, they kind of lured them in after the uh, break and then uh, closed the trap. Uh, this is not the only stock that's being actively managed by management. Um, and what I mean by that is manipulated. Uh, they made sure and get out the worst of the one-liners early on and then sprung the trap and had ran everybody that they could. It was a fairly healthy short um, uh, interest in Chipotle. And I think uh, they just needed some decent numbers out here and to uh, spring the trap. Of course, this one right back up to the previous highs. You should have seen this thing you know, volume expand, and everything else. I, I guess it's okay. Uh, I just continue to think that uh, what we'll see is a quarter down the way, maybe two quarters, that they'll be right back to the problems that they had when this thing was bouncing off 600, and that is food costs and the ability to get their non-genetically modified materials. In fact, there is going to be a law, and it looks like it's going to get passed, and that law basically states that you can't put on there that a, a food was not or was genetically modified. The reason why is there's a bunch of, uh, of uh, crazies in Berkeley, California. There's a reason they call it berserkly. And uh, these all people want to make a little law in their little town so it spreads like wildfire to the rest of the United States. And it looks like there's probably enough and into election cycle. I don't think there's a lot of people that want to stand in front of uh, the farmers on this one, so I suspect it's going to make its way through. But uh, Chipotle, I think, is going to have a very tough time in the next three, six months uh, dodging this thing about them not using genetically modified foods because I think it's going to be illegal to say that it is or isn't. Uh, at least uh, that's looking. So you want to keep a close eye on Congress and that bill, as it moves through, I know it made uh, it was unanimous in the committee, and that committee does have, I think, four or five Democrats on it. So I think that there's a good chance that we will see that bill sail through Congress. I don't know if the president would sign it. Probably a little too early. But if there was a risk factor for Chipotle, it was a law about whether or not you can say your foods are non uh, and not genetically modified. If that's why people are buying their food today, we'll be back in a minute. FNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed Taz 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we have an interesting discussion going on about how these stocks are crashing at the bottom. And I guess... It's more of an anecdotal thing. If there's a giant study, I'm not aware of it, um, and I haven't seen one. But it does bring me back to the dot-com craze, and that was a lot of these stocks would get hit. Everybody um, would buy them at the lows. They'd come back to the lows, and then they'd blow out the lows. You'd wake up. I mean, technically, the stocks look beautiful down at the lows, and you woke up the next day, and they were down 10%. And, and that is what's scary out here is that technically a lot of these stocks should be holding up, and they're coming into earnings and getting blown out to the bottom. Now, granted, these aren't the stocks that everybody talks about every five minutes on CNBC, uh, but uh, these are the, the other stocks. And that's why leadership has gotten extremely narrow in these higher stocks out here. But uh, markets as a whole do not crash at the highs, they crash at the lows. We are at the highs. What I'm saying is a lot of these stocks at the lows are crashing. 
And uh, that's not a good sign out here for the long-term health of the broad market. Doesn't mean it's going to crash. Just means that you shouldn't see a lot of stocks that are testing previous lows go into earnings and then blow down 10, 15, 20% um, the next day. Uh, so I'm very nervous, even though the charts look fairly decent on some of these to get it. And of course, the biggest stocks out here have super high short interest because everybody knows that these things are uh, hugely overpriced. And all you have to do is get a bunch of people together and run this, uh, run this stock. Um, Google probably warranted $35 higher price on earnings, but it's because uh, Herb Greenberg was so active in making sure everybody thought the stocks and the books were rigged, they, they had a huge amount of people that were uh, had recently shorted uh, Google. And I think that a lot of those stocks are like that. Uh, if you don't get a huge pop down, uh, it's problematic. Apple was the reverse. Everybody was telling everybody how it was going to the moon. They ran all the shorts, and then is when a stock gets incredibly dangerous because there isn't that nor uh, normal uh, amount of people under it to grab it. And, uh, you know, the perennial stocks that have high short interest like Intuitive Surgical seem to be the ones uh, that are popping. The ones that have little or no short interest are the ones that blow down at the bottom and don't have a lot and, of course, aren't as well known. We got a lot of earnings after the bell uh, and uh, both uh, Qualcomm and Texas Instruments. I don't have a real good idea on on uh, Texas Instruments. Um, I haven't paid enough attention to it. To me, Qualcomm is much more interesting. They've got huge amounts of uh, problems in China. And what do they do? If China is truly the growth market, will they have to give up uh, their intellectual property to grow into that market? Um, is Samsung correct in saying that the uh, huge amount uh, or the top is in uh, Peak cell phone would probably be the best way to describe it. Uh, that's what Samsung's saying. They've got a huge amount of the business. They may not be making money on it, but they have a huge part of the market share. And they're saying that people just aren't upgrading the way that they used to. Um, and two, specialty phones like their Edge are what are selling. Big phones are what are selling. And even Apple's mixture from what they sold in the uh, bigger uh, pro version of the 6S um, seems to be that, that people will be buy something, but it's got to be bigger, better, and have some kind of difference to get people moving out there. For Qualcomm, the question is, what happens in China? And I don't answer it. It's just, it's tough to see. They've got a lot of regular, uh, regular, I can't even say it, regulatory issues out there. And I don't, I'm, I wouldn't bet long or short on it. I don't think that they move that much though by looking at the options. Hang on. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.